Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare sage fritters from a beautiful book on agriculture, written in the 17th century by Vincenzo Tanara, titled L'economia del cittadino in villa. We start with ingredients. We need meadow sage, chestnut flour and wine. We chose meadow sage because in this period it is growing everywhere in our garden and in the fields nearby. But you may use whichever variety of sage. Meadow sage has a very delicate flavor and is perfect for these fritters. There are plenty of variants for this recipe, starting from the Middle Ages and reaching the contemporary era. The basic recipe consists in dipping the leaves in a butter made with flour, then deep fry them in olive oil. A recipe that the physician Ludovico Bertaldi in the 16th century recommends also for rosemary. Maestro Martino in the 15th century writes instead a more complex preparation, making a butter with flour, eggs, sugar, cinnamon and saffron also suggested to fry young bay laurel leaves. Cristoforo Messisbugo, in the 16th century, suggests a butter with flour, wine and a lot of sugar and honey. This recipe is recommended for sage, rosemary, bay laurel or fennel, as well as parsnip and leeks. Today, sage leaves are generally dipped in a butter made with flour and beer, sometimes eggs then fried and served as an appetizer. The variant we chose instead requires wine and either wheat flour or chestnut flour, but the author writes that with chestnut flour we obtain better fritters. There are no sweeteners, but by mixing wine and chestnut flour the outcome is quite sweet and very aromatic. We prepare a butter with 4 tablespoons of chestnut flour, half a cup of wine and 2 pinches of salt. You may use a butter more or less liquid. The outcome will change a little, but you will obtain excellent fritters anyway. Chestnut flour is very common in historical Italian cooking to prepare bread, fritters and cakes. Pliny writes that women used it to make bread when cereals were forbidden for religious reasons. Still today we prepare a cake called castagnaccio, which may be sweet or savory, whereas the word castagnazzo at Tanara's time refers to a fritter. Dishes with chestnut flour are now generally made in autumn, but actually preparing chestnut flour is a good way to preserve chestnuts all year round, clearly in addition to drying them. Moreover, Tanara's recipe seems more suitable for spring and summer, since this is the period in which sage is better. We fry the sage in olive oil for about one minute, then flip it and fry the other side for 30 seconds. You find more historical recipes with aromatic herbs and vegetables in our new book, available on Amazon in ebook and printed edition, titled Early Italian Recipes, Vegetables, Fruit, Herbs and Flowers. In the book you find several recipes from the antiquity to the beginning of the modern era, with the original texts and our translations in addition to our suggestions about how to interpret the recipes and substitute the ingredients difficult to find. Moreover, you find an introduction about the importance of vegetables in historical Italian cooking and their relationship with philosophy, religion and medicine throughout the centuries. The book is available in English and Italian. On Amazon you also find our book on ancient food, ancient Roman cooking and two translations of medieval sources, the Observazione Ciborum, written in the 6th century, 
by the Byzantine physician Antimus for the king of the Franks. And the Registrum Coquine, which dates back to the 15th century, written by the German cook Johannes Bockenheim. For more translations and articles on historical food, check out our Patreon page. To support our work, you can also buy us a beer or purchase our merchandise. You find all the links in the description below. The fritters turned out sweet and delicious, fragrant with sage and olive oil and crunchy. There are a perfect appetizer for a traditional Italian meal or a good dish to accompany meat in a medieval or a renaissance banquet. To prepare this recipe, we strongly recommend chestnut flour, but it would be interesting to try the variants suggested by the other authors mentioned before. A simple and great dish, perfect for this season. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, subscribe our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon.